All right, YouTube, what's shaking? So today I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, something very near and dear to my heart, and that is my EDC. Um, I've already done a couple of videos already, my 10 plus years with my Benchmade, my 10 plus years with my Leatherman, and um, I figured why not dive deeper into uh, my EDC in general, what I, what I generally carry on me day to day. And, um, it doesn't change much day to day. It changes, it's changed over the years. Uh, sometimes I'll carry slightly different things on me depending if I'm uh, going to work or just going out. Um, so I wanted to show you, you know, what, uh, that looks like over so many years and, um, maybe show you some of the things that I've learned, some of the things that I enjoy carrying, some of the things I thought I would carry and don't anymore. So what got me into EDC in the first place? Uh, the funny thing is, is it probably was um, my first Swiss Army knife. So really my first multi-tool. Um, I generally, I carried one even at a young age and uh, I liked having that versatility on me but eventually that grew into wanting a, an independent knife and wanting a uh, a pen or at first I used to carry the small uh, sharpies um, and then that turned into well now I need something to write on so a notepad and uh, you know here um, in this climate, having Burt's Bees on you or some type of lip balm is kind of necessary for a good portion of the year. Um, so that's always in my pocket. You know, and then you got your uh, necessary stuff, your keys, maybe things you keep on your key rings. Um, uh, watch, I'm a big watch fan, so... Um, have one of those on my wrist at all times. Nowadays, it's been more smart watches instead of just your dumb watches. Uh, you know, I think it's something that a lot of people should um, consider in their day to day is what they have on them and what they're prepared for. I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not much of a prepper doomsday person, but it is very useful having a nice sharp blade on you just in case um, you know, you do need to cut a, a seat belt or it's nice having a couple of basic tools on you because it, it's nice to be able to fix things if you need to on the fly. Open something up that, uh, that you need to get into. If you don't have any tools on you, you're, I mean, what, what can you do? So it, it's nice having that, that kind of stuff on you. Something that I think a lot of people, um, really spend too much effort on is, or, spend too much money on is EDC. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, you can have most things on you that you need for uh, not a whole lot of money. Now, it is nice having, you know, the titanium stuff and um, um, the expensive brand name knives and uh, the more expensive multi-tools, but it's not really necessary. I mean, you can get away with a lot cheaper gear and still get basically the same stuff done but you know maybe you start off cheap and then you work into more expensive stuff you know don't start off spending three four hundred dollars on the stuff that's in your pocket you know buy a zebra pen for five dollars uh buy uh, a, a low-cost swiss army knife for your multi-tool I, I still carry a swiss army knife on me um you know, uh, you don't need an expensive notepad. That's actually something that I've found out recently and that's something I'll show you guys. Uh, so it doesn't have to be expensive. You know, if you end up liking it and you end up considering it a hobby and you're a gear collector, eventually you'll get the more expensive stuff, but it doesn't have to start that way. So I think uh, I'll take you in for a closer look. We'll look at um, the items I carry on me day to day and um, give you more explanation of why I chose what I chose, why I like what I like, and maybe why I switched out to ones that I didn't like as much. All right, time for the close-up. So we'll start with um, everything I carry in my pockets, starting with 
my Benchmade Griptilian. This knife has seen a lot of use. I have a full video on it, a description of how I use it, why I like it, why I've carried it for over 10 years, and um, why when it comes to it being a work knife for me, um, it's just a tank of a knife. It takes all sorts of abuse, still has the tip, Nice and sharp, I sharpen it myself. It's a great knife, I'd recommend it to anybody. And uh, an essential item for EDC. Next would be my flashlight of choice. Um, right now it's the uh, Rider RX from Ace Beam. They have a couple of different versions of this. Um, I really liked the titanium housing one with the blue anodized aluminum for the uh, flashlight body and the clip. One of the things I like about this flashlight is it just takes a standard AA, but it comes with a rechargeable uh, lithium battery. And uh, I like that the C port is in this instead of in the body of the flashlight. So really, there's not much that can go wrong with this flashlight. If this port gets uh, damaged or the battery's no good, just get a new one. No big deal. It's a really cheap um, fix and for a relatively expensive flashlight. I think I bought this one for about $50, $55 off of Amazon. I'll end up putting links for everything I show here um, to Amazon just so if you guys are interested in any of them want them in your EDC is an easy place to get them I do very much enjoy this flashlight it's basic um, if you turn it off and on it goes through its next modes that's a like moonlight one lumen mode type deal um, if you cycle through the flash or if you cycle through the lights a couple of times you'll eventually get to an SOS I've never needed to use that so I you know generally don't um, if you leave it on a mode for long enough it'll remember that mode so when you turn it on it'll go immediately back to that mode uh, the buttons very nice and clicky this has been a great flashlight I really enjoy this all right so next one of my most critical items that I carry on me Swiss Army knife. Now this is the one that um, comes stock with these wood scales on it. Um, I thought it looked nifty in comparison to you know your standard red Swiss Army knife. Again, I'll leave links to it. I don't remember which style of Swiss Army knife this is, but. Um, I do know the things I use on it come on pretty much all the Swiss Army knives, and that's the toothpick. I use that all the time. Tweezers, um, my only set of tweezers I have on me, so if I ever need them, they do get used, and that's something that I really wouldn't want to go without anymore. Um, you know, it's got your standard longer blade. Haven't cleaned that in a while. And then it's got the shorter blade. And then it's got your bigger flat edge with bottle opener. I do like this one a lot. That sees a fair amount of use. Um, can opener, which is actually a pretty good can opener. Works very good. Little flat head. I don't think I've ever used that in the life of me having the tool. It's just not a very functional flat head. Um, Surprisingly enough, I've used this all the time, um, but not for corks, not for wine. Um, I find it's actually a very useful pick. Um, I work in uh, manufacturing industry uh, as an integrator, test engineer, and um, if I'm ever disassembling something and it's got O-rings, that point in this curve is really nice for getting behind an O-ring and twisting it out 
I use it all the time for that, and uh, I've used it for other oddball things in uh, my line of work. I actually find it to be relatively useful. It's also good for getting under fingernails. Um, so I really like having the corkscrew. I really won't get a Swiss Army knife anymore without it. That's part of the reason why, and also for the the size difference. This is a little beefier, thicker. It's got that extra uh, uh, row to it. Um, it doesn't have a corkscrew. It's got the Phillips, and I find that I don't need that Phillips very often, and it's not very uh, functional. Uh, I'll go over that in a little bit, and when I talk about the reasons why I've swapped out for different ones, but uh, yeah, I enjoy this. Um, I really do want to step up um, my Swiss Army knife game. I've been seeing a ton of custom-made Swiss Army knives that are using like Spyderco knives in them and things of that nature. And uh, they look super cool. Really interested in uh, potentially upgrading to one of those soon. But for now, this is always in my pocket. Uh, I've already showed it, but it is a necessary EDC item for me. That's my Burt's Bees. Always have one on me. Don't go anywhere without it. I don't think there's much story to that other than, um, you know, I, I live in Michigan. Winter, you generally need some lip balm, and that that does it for me. Uh, one of my newer-ish items is this pen. This is uh, founded on Amazon, Tac Ray Mini Pen. It's a titanium pen, so it's very light. It's very tough. It's bolt action, which is enjoyable. It's like another fidget toy on me. Um, I added this titanium bead to it, another Amazon find. Does that say key unity? I just searched that up for titanium beads on Amazon, and that was uh, my favorite looking one. There's quite a lot of options, actually. Um, I really enjoy this pen. Um, the <clears throat> the ink refills, whoop, sorry, hit the camera there. The ink refills uh, that it comes with are not very good. So what I ended up buying instead is these Lamy M22 refills. Medium nib, you can get fine nibs. Um, this is in black. I have a blue one waiting for this one run for this one to run out. So I really enjoy the pen body. The ink it comes with just isn't very good. So um, you upgrade it to this uh, Lamy ink and oh, it's got a little O-ring seal there too, which is nice uh, with the Lamy ink. And this thing writes great. It's really slim, streamlined, fits in the pocket really well. This is a very welcome addition. I actually lost one of these and uh, I wasn't carrying it for a while and I missed it the whole time I, I didn't have it on me so um, I ended up buying another one. Sucks to do it. It's not the most expensive titanium pen but you're still spending 35 bucks on a pen. It kind of hurts, you know? Um, next is a little less exciting but um, what I've chosen for a wallet for now. I used to carry a small leather wallet this is a Ridge style wallet. It is not a Ridge wallet. I would carry a Ridge wallet, but uh, they are very expensive and I haven't wanted to pay that kind of money for the same thing I could buy for, I think I spent $12 on this one, somewhere around there. Again, I'll link it in the description. Um, it's got the elastic money clip with uh, this guy on it. Um, it's also got little, I don't know if I'll, you'll be able to see them. Yeah, those are little rubber grips to hold on to the money. So the money doesn't just slip out because everything would be quite slick without it. Um, obviously, I didn't put my cards here in here for obvious reasons, but it works really good for holding quite a few cards. I have a pretty good stack of uh, cards that I keep in this and... It fits in the pocket nice with everything else. Also, the nice thing about it being uh, lower cost, I really didn't, you know, care if the finish got, you know, beat up too much. 
being with everything else in my pocket, you know, it sits with a titanium pen, it sits with my Swiss Army knife, sits with my flashlight. Um, you know, these are on my pocket edge because they have pocket clips, but they still, you know, hit the top of it and wear it. So it being cheaper, I didn't feel so bad at getting scuffed up and worn on, you know. So I, I like this. I, I'll probably buy a replacement one of these, or I might even... 3d print new cover plates just to change it change it out and get different colors i probably wouldn't go back to a leather wallet after having this style i like this better than the leather wallet now uh next item here this has been a big change somewhat recently for me to go to this style notepad these uh mini composition books um i found this at dollar tree in a pack of uh three a pack of four for like a buck fifty super super convenient um this is what i've been keeping all of my notes in for um, youtube or maybe oddball notes from work that kind of stuff um i really enjoy having some sort of notepad on me um, now, I used to carry uh, more expensive or more pretty, more nice looking notepads like the Field Notes and the Write in Rain uh, notepads, which I would definitely recommend either of these. They're very nice, high quality. Um, but the problem that I was having with these is that I wouldn't use them all the time and I wouldn't carry them in my pocket because I didn't like distorting them. I don't know what it is, but I didn't like putting wear, especially like on these. They're so nifty looking and I didn't want to beat them up by being in my pocket and getting creased up and getting bent and worn and pages falling out. I just... I don't know, there was something in me had a problem with it, so I, I never carried these in my pocket because I always wanted to keep them pristine. And so I went for quite a long time without carrying a notepad just because I, had, I didn't know what to carry. And then it was actually another uh, YouTube video that I saw that recommended carrying these just for note-taking. I was like, you know what? I never thought of getting these and it's like I don't feel bad putting it in my pocket and it, it melts away in your pocket. You don't even know that it's there until you need it, uh, where this right and rain is a bit thicker, a bit heavier, and it's also got these. So you feel that in your pocket and you feel it when you sit down on it. So it, I don't know, it just bothered me more. This I would recommend anybody to carry on them for a small, small notepad. You can probably find them Dollar Tree. You could probably find them. I know you can find them uh, Amazon. Uh, the example of the video I saw, he found his in Walmart. Um, I actually didn't check Walmart because I found such a good deal at the Dollar Tree. I just I bought them there. <clears throat> um, really been enjoying that lately. Um, next. This is uh, actually not in my pocket anymore. It sits on my belt loop. Uh, but this is my Samsung headphones. Um, I actually designed and printed this uh, holder. This is 3D printed. Yeah, there we go. This is 3D printed. Um, I designed this in Fusion 360, an Autodesk program, and uh, also the uh, belt clip here. There we go. So this didn't have to share space in my pocket with everything else. And you can see just from the look of it, it's you know quite beat up, quite scuffed up because it has shared. Uh, my pocket with all of this stuff for quite a while and um, because of the glossy and smoothness of it depending on uh, how deep my pants pocket is I've had this thing fly out of my pants pocket you know you're sitting down it kind of weasels its way up you stand up and then bloop, 
it goes flying. You got earbuds going. I've had them going across parking lots, out of my desk, getting out of my desk chair, all sorts of stuff. So now it's a nice snug fit into there. Not going to fall out at all. And uh, then this goes uh, on my belt loop and it just, you know, dangles on there all day. I, 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 uh, I like the design so far to hold it. I like the earbuds. I mean, if you got a Samsung phone or really any phone, they're, they're fine. Um, I'm not much of an earbud connoisseur, but they work good for me, so why not? I'll also have those linked in the description as well. Let's see what else we got. Uh, simple keys. Um, this is, uh, if you ever remember the bank, Standard Federal, they used to hand these out. And he's been on my keys for a very, very long time. I could do a 20 plus year review of this pig and it's been great. Uh, this is uh, another one of my belt loop clips. I added one to my keys. Put those there. Um, so watch. This is my Samsung Galaxy Watch 3, I believe it is. Yeah. Um, I do a smartwatch now. I've gotten into uh, running, working out, um, that kind of thing. And uh, it's nice to have a smartwatch on you for keeping track of your steps. I really like it for the keeping track of heart rate. Um, you know, you can also keep track of uh, workouts on this thing. You get an app to where you can see um, everything that that happened throughout the workout. There we go. Got the always on display. Um, so I, I've, I've really enjoyed having a smartwatch. Now this smartwatch, um, I don't know if I would totally recommend it. If you want it for working out, I would recommend it for uh, style and usability. I really like the bezel that you turn the screen with. It is a touch screen as well, but um, being able to use this is super nice. Um, I use it for work every day and you can see it's really not beat up, which I'm surprised about, to be honest with you. <clears throat> um, but as far as working out goes, it doesn't track my heart rate very well. So I'll get huge, um, uh, stretches of time in my workout where it just won't collect any heart rate data. And, um, I've tried, um, you know, normal, they recommend you go back a little bit. I've tried that watch position. I've tried inside the wrist. I've tried as tight as I could make it, and it just never seems to get a very consistent read. Um, but if you're not too big into the working out and wanting to track the heart rate, I do really like the watch. You can get them pretty cheap, especially on Amazon, like 80, 90 bucks renewed. Um, I think like 120 or 130 brand new. It's a... Uh, it's good watch. A ton of watch bands fit it. It's just a simple black silicone that I usually use for working out or work. Uh, the leather one that came with it is nice too, but I usually use this. Um, I do like that. Uh, back when I used to just wear, uh, <clears throat> you know, your standard just dumb watches, um, I used to wear this one a lot. I like the retro vibe. I'm like the digital time, quickly get a reading without having to look at a watch face, uh, having the date up there, the light. The problem with the light is I always forgot where the light was, so when it was dark, I would always press the wrong button. So that was, you know, inconvenient, but I like this watch. If I wasn't into working out and, and all that, I probably would still be wearing it. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's really, oh. Actually, well, that's one more thing. This has been an essential EDC item for me, is uh, my LTT store water bottle. Um, if you're not familiar with them, very big YouTuber, um, tech platform. Uh, they make and brand these. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, it's a good water bottle. It's very sturdy. 
and I like the design. They have cool colors. This is, uh, I don't know, six months of use. No, seven or eight months of use actually now. It's held up great. I enjoy it a lot. I'd recommend it to anybody. I'd also recommend the channel to anybody, especially if you're into tech. Um, so this video might get a little long, so I'm going to try to add some of this stuff in um, quick here. Um, we talked a little bit about the Swiss Army knife. This one over that one. This one's thicker, so I didn't like that. It's got just the basic red scales, which, you know, as you wear it, they get really, really scuffed up. And, you know, some stuff ages really nice with a patina. I don't think this is one of those cases. It's not my favorite look. Um, I, I mentioned not liking the Phillips instead of the corkscrew. I'd rather have the corkscrew. I also find that you end up pinching your fingers pretty good with this when you go to use it or try to put any real torque on it. So I find that not super useful. Also, T-handles don't fit in a lot of places when you're trying to screw something. Like, that's a lot of body that has to rotate around a screw. So if it's, you know, got anything close to it that you have to reach into and, and only rotate a little bit, you might be stuck doing something like that, which is very irritating. So uh, that's why I switched to the, uh, the smaller wood scales with the corkscrew. I enjoy that more. So that covers that. Uh, pens. I've had other pocket EDC pens before. Um, this is, uh, they call these polka pens. There you go, polka, P-O-K-K-A -K -K pens. And this was the right and rain version of it. So it was like a, what do they call that? OD green or whatever. Uh, it's not a bad pen. It's just very light. Um, it's, uh, I like having them. I, I usually throw them in like, um, extra packs and stuff like that, just so you have more pens on you than what's in your pocket. Um, but I didn't really like it for my EDC. It was just too light and it, it writes okay. Nothing crazy. Nothing that I was overly excited about. But uh, the form factor and the capabilities of it, it's nice. I, I would still recommend it. It's, it's not very expensive either. I think you can get these for like a two-pack for $8, something like that. Also be linked. Um, this actually has been in my pocket for quite a long time. This is a bullet pen. Um, copper finish. And... I mean, you can tell it's been carried, used for quite a while, and you get a heck of a patina on it. Been dropped many times. See if we can focus on that. There we go. Been dropped many times, both that end and that end. Um, the clip doesn't age the same way because it's not the same material. It was like a plated clip. Um... I don't even know if the clip is really necessary for most people. The bullet pen itself is nice. Um, I would have continued carrying this pretty much indefinitely if it wasn't for the uh, bullet pen ink. And some people might not be happy about me saying that, but I really don't like writing with this ink. It usually starts... Um, sorry about that usually starts hard and um, doesn't uh, doesn't write very well at first and then sometimes you'll get a like glob of it on the tip and that will end up on whatever you started writing it'll like come off mid I don't know mid word and you'll have just a glob of like congealed ink um, yeah, I just don't, I don't really like the bullet pen ink. I do like the bullet pen. The ink isn't my favorite. And I think you can get different bullet style cartridges. Uh, I just didn't explore that. I, I much prefer now my titanium pen with the Lamy insert. I think it's uh, superior, but I do like the look and feel of this. I, I would still recommend these. 
because they're they are good pens I just that little nitpicky stuff kind of ate away at me um i will say too funny enough nobody ever commented and not that this is an important feature of having these things but nobody ever commented on my bullet pen every time i use this pen i get a comment about it i don't know what it is about this pen that stands out so much more than this pen but people just seem to what gravitate towards the titanium pen more um so what else do we got uh we got I showed these in my other video, but I might as well show them here. Uh, these are my knives that I tend to carry when I'm not working. Um, sometimes I carry my batch of anyway, but uh, I've been carrying uh, the Civivi. Um, I'll put a link in the description for it. I forget what this one is called, to be honest with you. Ceramic bearings for the blade liner lock uh, clear or unfinished g10 scales or undyed maybe is that what it is because you can actually change the color of these but i really just like the look of them as is and they actually surprisingly enough don't really get super dirty um this is often in my pocket instead of my bench made when uh when i'm not working the blades the blade and the build quality is just not as robust as the bench made so that's why uh, it's not really a work knife for me and this is the uh, rat model 2 same story as the Civivi except cheaper um, it's a nice thin blade um, gets really really sharp but it's a weaker steel uh, the tip will break easier and it's a lesser build quality compared to the Benchmade. But it fits in the pocket really nice. It's very thin in comparison to, say, the Benchmade. Um, liner lock on this, similar to the Civivi. No bearings in that. I think it's just uh, brass washers. Nice knife, though. I like the uh, bone color. It was like a limited edition that I saw. If you want a cheap, solid EDC folding knife, you can find these on Amazon for like 30 bucks. They're great knives. I'd recommend them to anybody. They're just a little on the, the dainty side as far as steel is concerned. It's not very tough. Benchmade is tough. I mean, you can't break that thing if you wanted to. <clears throat> um, and then if I'm working or not, my Leatherman. I won't get deep into this, but it's just a Leatherman wave. This generally I only have on my person when uh, when I'm working. Um, if you want to see a full review of this and uh, show everything about it, I have the uh, inserts and. Uh, yeah, the Leatherman inserts for the bits and then I got the bit driver. Um, I do have another video laying this whole guy out. Um, great multi-tool. It's the Leatherman Wave. Um, I'd recommend the Wave to anybody, but it is heavy. I don't put it on my belt when I'm not working. It's only on my belt when I'm working. I don't see any point in it. I got enough multi-tool in that. I got a nice blade there for when I'm just out and about. Um, but at work it is an EDC for me so I figured I'd bring it up in the video as well we'll put that right there so I think that's it um, I'd like to hear what you guys think what is uh, what is your EDC that you carry on you is uh, anything look different than uh, what you see here or anything that I'm missing that you think is necessary for an EDC. Um, I know one thing that I don't have set up yet that I want to set up is uh, like a first aid style um, kit for my pack. And I didn't get to that in that video. This video, this video is uh, way too long as it is. I'll probably cut some of it out. I think that's it for now. Until next time.